is time to introduce our special guest speaker. So let me do the honors here. Abby Vasek, I have a feeling most of you know who she is, but Abby Vasek, star of two hit TV shows on HGTV, has 15 years of interior design experience. She is an expert in interior design and real estate and actively consults and teaches for the real estate, interior design, and entertainment industries. Abby also works with her husband, real estate team, her husband's real estate team, as an interior design consultant for developers and homeowners. She also manages the home evaluations and make ready process that help their clients get the most return for their resale. Today, Abby will be sharing home improvement techniques that can benefit <laughs> homes recovering from Harvey that are on trend and have a high ROI for resale. Come on up, Abby. Thank you. Thank you. Right on. Thank you so much. Also, I'll be taking off. It was great to see everyone. My nanny leaves at So I just didn't want you to think I was taking away, okay? Abby, take it away. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here with all of you. Um, we make this drive quite a bit, don't we? We like coming down from Houston, uh, coming up to Houston, down to Houston, right? It's down. Um, we left Wimberley, Texas, just southwest of Austin, where we live uh, early this morning before the sun came up. We actually uh, dropped the kiddos off at my sister's house, like I seem to do a lot lately. Take them to school, we got a gig. And uh, gosh, it couldn't have been a nicer drive though today. The sun started coming out. It was just crisp, wasn't it? It was so beautiful and flowers all along the road. It's, it's April, right? It's April in Texas. Probably the best time of the year in Texas, right? It's so short-lived before the bugs all really come out and before the heat really just starts getting horrible. I love April. Um, I also, there's a lot of things I love about it, but one of the things that I think makes it also my favorite time of the year is that it's my boy's birthday month, and um, it's actually this coming Saturday. I've got twin boys, they're turning 11, and uh, it's April 21st. So April 21st, 2007, was a day I'll never forget, because it's when I'm, I, well, I unexpectedly deliver twins. <laughs> now, now, unexpectedly, exactly, I knew I was pregnant. I knew that much, but I just, I didn't know there was two of them in there. I had a midwife that, I don't know, either she just didn't catch that, second heartbeat, or she did and thought it'd be a really funny surprise. I don't know, but all I know is that one way or the other, my life was really in danger at that point because I was, Y'all, I was, I would not have fit in this dress at all. I was like 240-ish pounds. I was huge. I don't know how I didn't know something was going on. Like, but, you know, it was my first go around with it. I didn't know. And um, sure enough, I, I hit a severe state of preeclampsia, right? And my body was over, overstressed, overworked. It couldn't handle it anymore. And... She just kept telling me to pop on a movie. She told me to put in Happy Feet the movie. I needed to laugh a little bit and relax. I don't know, my mother didn't think that was good enough advice. So she was living in Houston at the time and she raced down to Austin and brought with her the, um, the um, uh, blood pressure cuff. And man, she was checking my blood pressure every second and watching me like a hawk. And then the next thing I know, she's made me an appointment to go see Dr. Polon at St. David's Hospital. And we walked in there and he gave me a sonogram and sure enough, he said, well, you've got two babies in there. They are full term, no less. And you need to deliver immediately. Wow. So my mom and I were just, we, well, we'd never heard of twins in our family. So we were shocked, just absolutely shocked. I think, Daniel, were you a little shocked? <laughs> Daniel was a little shocked too. <laughs> shocked but so we go in they induce labor um they're checking on me they got meds on me so my blood pressure stabilized and everything was really going beautifully and then my very attentive wonderful doctor he came in and um 
It was strange. He said one word. He said, cord. Cord. And all of a sudden, what seemingly, it seemed, there were four people that appeared out of nowhere, and they were whisking me out of the, the hospital room and into the operating room. And within seconds, they said, just close your eyes, everything's going to be okay. I said, okay, and that's all I remember. I don't know about maybe, was it a half hour or an hour? I, I don't know. Uh, later, I, I woke up, and they brought me two perfect little baby boys. Right? They were just perfect. And that moment that was scary was him. He, was, uh, he had his head on the cord. He wasn't getting the oxygen, and that was what was going on. So um, I don't know. I was in over my head. This was not my department, clearly. And so I was so grateful uh, to that doctor for saving all of our lives. I sent him a card and a pound of dark chocolate. He told me that was his favorite. I remember that. And while I said there was something like, you know, there are no words to really express my gratitude to you, um, I do recognize that it is your attentiveness, your, um, his passion, his precision, and his dedication to his job is what made all the difference, you know? And I know that in our line of work, we don't really consider that we are, you know, we're not out there saving lives necessarily. We don't always consider that um, our clients' lives are on the line with every transaction that we make. But are they? I want to continue the story just a little bit more and tell you that um, at the time that all of this was happening, uh, we were also living with my sister and her husband. And strangely enough, she, she was also pregnant. We, really, we like to do everything together. And so she was pregnant too, and she went and got a sonogram immediately. She, you know, she's about four months behind me in the process. And so she's in there telling that sonogram technician about my crazy experience in this day and age. Who, does, who, who has that happened to him? And that's when they said, well, you're having twins too. I mean, I know we like to do things together, but everyone was like, come on now. <gasps> you know, this is crazy. And so, um, yeah, it, it turned into this crazy household. You know, it, it was uh, four sleep-deprived adults, <laughs> four crying infants. You know, we had a geriatric dog. Um, we had a young, crazy blue healer dog that was always in everything. Oh, and we had the fifth wheel. We had this, this bonus fifth wheel Craigslist roommate dude living with us. Like, he was smart. He got smart real quick, though. He moved out. And uh, he moved in with the neighbors. And uh, that all worked out much better. And I don't blame him. I don't, I don't blame him. In fact, I mean, after a while, we wanted to do the same thing. We wanted to move out. It was just too much. You know, I mean, there was a lot of sweet things about sharing that experience. And uh, there were some advantages to being with my sister. That, that's true. But all in all, I was just really, 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 I feel it on like a cellular level. I was ready to get out and make my own family. Like do our own thing. Create our own rhythms. You know, so we called a realtor. And we started looking around outside of the Austin a little bit. And she showed us this darling little property in Wimberley, Texas. It had a, had a uh, not-so-darling fixer-upper um, on this one acre, but we could both feel the potential. You know when you just know it just feels right? This is us. This is, where, this is our home. And sure enough, we kind of checked, got with our lender, checked everything out. We had the 10% to put down, for, to make the down payment. It was probably one of the most exciting processes, aside from the unexpected twins, that we'd ever experienced, you know. And then we got a call the next morning about 7.30. I mean, it was early for my realtor to be calling us, but sure enough, she called and said, oh, you had a hiccup. No. That happens, doesn't it, sometimes? Um, the bank would like to consider, write this up as a land loan, and so they're going to need double for the down payment. I was just that, I was so, we were out. We were going to be out, doing our own thing, and it was impossible. 
We just didn't have it. You know, I got off the phone and I just, oh, you know, that just when your stomach drops. She called us back the next day, a little less than 24 hours, and said, I think I have a solution. This looks like a wonderful long-term investment property. We'd like to buy it, owner finance, and sell it to you guys with just the 10% down. That was, it was a miracle. I mean, it, that's what it felt like. It felt to us like it was the darkest dark, and then there was the dawn, you know, where the miracle takes place. And then to compound that miracle, uh, my sister, she moved a couple months later, just a few miles down the road. <laughs> Since then, so those boys are, grow, are more like brothers than they are even cousins. They have been growing up together. Um, my mom moved uh, just around the corner from us. My boys are constantly back and forth. They ride a little bike to my mom's house. I couldn't believe it. She loved Houston. She grew up in Houston. I couldn't believe she moved away, but she did. And then uh, another one of my sisters moved there after that. And then my brother, who just retired as an officer from the military, he and his wife just more recently bought a house in the area. And my whole tribe is now together again. You know, it, it's, um, it, she, that realtor kind of changed our lives in that moment. You know, she did. And I don't think that that's that uncommon. I find that real estate agents are often working with people at the intersection of really big life changes, right? Marriages, divorces, deaths, promotions, job loss, all these things that happen, they're right there helping us navigate through that, through that path, you know, and blessing people, making it, being a part of an integral part of changing impacting people's lives. We got a lot of realtors in this room right now. I want, to, I want you to raise your hand right now if you've ever been a part, an integral part of change in another's life as a real estate agent. Hold them up, hold them up. Look at all those hands. Look at all those life-changing moments. Can we just give ourselves a clap? I mean, I don't think we ever really recognize all that we do. I heard someone tell me the other day, a, real, a realtor is like a duck. And I'm like, what They said, well, on top, they're just cool, cool. <laughs> they're coasting, but underneath the water? <laughs> oh, this is going on, right? I know, I'm married to one, and I've worked with you guys. I know, it's not all, it's not all cool and easy going, is it? It's a lot of hard work. Um, but you're, you're changing people's lives in a good way. And I find change comes in two ways. There's two kinds of change. There's the kind you see coming, the one you're prepared for, right? And then there's the others that just smack you upside the head, like unexpected twins, or the gut-wrenching change, like what Hurricane Harvey did to your community, right? And to the lives of so many people that you love gut-wrenching change. You know, I think uh, the, all, the entire country was watching that. You know, watching that water fill up in your homes and these, it was just, ooh. You can think about it, I get a little emotional. Um, I've got a lot of family here too. And so, gosh, that was really a scary thing. And we had a lot of friends who, did what they could do. They were heroes, you know? Some brought food trucks up here and just started serving food, thousands of dollars worth of food, like brisket and good stuff. I had other friends who came, pulled their boats, some of our boating buddies, came up here and brought their boats and were doing real life rescue. You know, there was a lot of attention. Um, the only thing with that is that, you know, after a while, our attention spans are short. Everyone gets distracted, kind of moves on with their life. And it's not over. <laughs> There's a lot of people in your community I know that are still in crisis. Um, others are, are maybe not in crisis, but they're in limbo. I can't stand limbo. 
I'd almost rather be in crisis than limbo. You know, um, others have decided that they're going to rebuild gradually, right? I know it's going a little slow, a lot slower than a lot of people would like. Um, and then others are, they're just selling it even as is and taking huge losses. Just they want it, they want out. Amen. They just want out, right? They, they never want to go through that again. And, and, and I don't, I don't blame them. Do you? And so this is why we do what we do because at those intersections of big change of either challenge or crisis depending on how much you have invested in yourself through continuing education through experience through coming to um, being committed to your WCR and coming to meetings like this and working on those strategic partnerships, working on those relationships with all of your other resources, that's what makes the difference. That's that either you have that confidence when you step into their lives and say, just like Dr. Pomon did for me. He just took the situation and said, this is what's gonna happen, this is how we're gonna do it. And in his confidence, I could just relax and say, okay, because you're the, you're the pro. Clearly, you're the pro. That's what I strive in all of my work that I do with you guys and in all of my classes. We're always working on those make ready improvements. We learn, we learn a lot about vocabulary, don't we? Like about architecture um, and building materials because I know that if you have, if you can um, speak with a certain level of clarity and confidence. If you know, just like we all know, a salesperson can better sell their product, the more you know about it, right? And so that's my goal for you, is to have to step in to your role with greater confidence. To be able to make these recommendations with high ROI and not get pushback. Have you ever gotten pushback? Right? But like a little bit of pushback on either the price that you recommend or the make ready practices um, or processes that you're recommending. Don't get this pushback, right? And it's like, what, what you called me. I, I'm here to help. And now I'm telling you what to do and you're not going to do it? I don't get it. Um, when that happens, it's because they don't really trust you, you know? And this is a really big deal. So they're holding on tight to the reins and they're not sure if you really know what you're talking about. And it's just, it, it, it makes the whole, sours the whole process, oh, right? What I want for you is for when you make the recommendations that they are, they are met with, um, well, I, I have a phrase I always say, if you can gain their confidence, you will gain their cooperation. It's just as simple as that. And so if, if you guys are interested, I brought some fun slides today where we're going to look at um, some trends that are going on. We're going to talk about some resources that are available and just help you sharpen those skills so you'll feel like you've got some really good advice to give and just better work on that confidence. So, okay, the first thing that I want to address, we're going to address three things. The first thing I really want to address is, well, I don't know, do we have any... Do we have lenders in the room? Any more of these? Your lender people, I want to see you. We love you. We need you so bad. Okay. <laughs> Working on our relationships with all of our make ready. I mean, it's a huge team. I've got in some of my classes, I've got a list. I forget what it is. It's like 15 or 16 different must-haves in your repertoire in order to make for a smooth uh, sales process. And one of those when we're dealing with a situation like we have here, where we are renovating, where we are, um, where we're renovating, um, we need those lenders because I learned about something. I don't know where I have been, what hole my head has been in, but apparently I'm not the only one. There is something called a new, a new home remodeling loan. Lenders, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So it is so much. It is greatly improved from that old FHA one. And you can literally take a buyer into a devastated home, but it's in the neighborhood they want, it's in the school district they want, 
and you can you can play like your own property brothers and go, okay, we found the right neighborhood, but now what we're gonna do in this house is da 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 da. And you can take that to the lender, and it's amazing. It lets you pick out all of your own um, all of your own professionals. It's not like the FHA one where you, the bank had to choose it. It was this really stringent process. It's actually been going really beautifully. You pick out your um, your make ready professionals. They, they look at what that cost is going to be. They take the appraised value with the new improvements, and then they lend on that. Up to 95, I've heard of some do it, up to 97% of the total value with what those improvements will be. So it allows you to go, I know another way, right? We always are hoping that that agent knows, knows another way around it. And that's one. That's one I want you guys to start taking advantage of if you didn't already know about it. Okay. The other thing that I want us to start looking at is we well, it's, it's, it's all about our resources, really. Um, something that, uh, before I get into some technical colors and things like that at the moment, um, these resources, what was I going to say about them? Oh, uh, and more on the money stuff, just for a moment. I've been working really diligently on our um, Make Ready resources and Oh, in, in my home staging classes, we talk about the way we sell real estate today is not at all the way we used to sell real estate. I mean, it's a lot harder because we are creating that move-in ready look, right? It's got to be move-in ready. People will pay more for it. They'll respond to it. And if you don't present that move-in ready model home staged look, you're going to have increased days on market. And we all know what happens when we get increased days on market, we get those nasty price reductions. And it's just a lower level, uh, lower quality of service. So we're learning how to elevate that level of service. And one way that we can do it is that the resources are watching. They realize what kind of challenge you're up against. You know, they see it. And so they're making all sorts of things where you can finance things. You can do pay at close. I've got resources for everything. If you want to get new floors, pay at close. You want to get new counters, pay it close. You want to get new backsplash, carpet, you name it. They're all out there. They know that that's how you're having to do business, so they're changing the way they do business to better support you. You guys are so supported. There is so much support for you to do to reach this new elevated level of presentation. Okay, so that, that's your homework. You're going to go home, and I want you to either call your lender and say, explain this new home uh, renovation loan or I want you to get on the phone with with an, a resource today and say I'm working on my make ready team I'm a realtor I'm working on my make ready team and I'd like to know a little bit about how you work and do you have any financing or pay it close options get your repertoire going of those so when you walk in it's not a question you say our finishes need to be competitive with our price point when people say, should I change it? Should I remodel it? Well, let's look at what price point we're trying to get. And in this neighborhood, what finishes do they have? It's not that creative, right? So we're just, we're just going to copy. In real estate, we're just copying um, those others in that price point, okay? And so if they've got granite, you say, great, I'm going to get my granite people over here. You know, and we're going to stop asking permission, too. I talked about that at Fort Bend. We, we had a... A fun topic called Consider It Sold. It was all about attitude, the attitude that gets the proper response. Right on. All right. Now let's get you some, some picture stuff. <laughs> My favorite stuff. Um, we're looking at homes and we're looking at the, let me start with the exterior here. Um, if you're trying to select colors with your clients, you really only need two colors on the outside and on the inside. Now this is not interior design. This is designed for real estate. So it's always about uh, lower lower cost, lower effort, maximum impact. And so notice I've gone with a nice medium tone on all of my siding and then all of the trim work, including the freeze board, the soffit, and the fascia. That whole eave, that whole unit can now be just one color if I go with a light color. If you go with a dark color underneath your soffit, it's going to cast a shadow all over the house. And so that seems to be the simplest formula. We've got all sorts of siding options happening. Not only is fiber cement, you know, been a leader for a long time with that hardy board, but now we've got something called smart siding that I, I, I know it's been around for a little while, but it's just really coming into vogue right now. It's a little bit more durable 
than fibrous cement and a lot easier to cut. So you're going to start seeing it more readily available in all of these different uh, styles from board and batten to the horizontal lap siding to the scallop to the shakes and the shingles. We're adding a lot of texture to the exterior of homes. And if you go with a nice horizontal lap around most of it, maybe you've got some stone on the bottom half, some nice uh, horizontal, and then we'll see something else happen up in the gables, like the, the, sh the shakes or the shingles, maybe the scallops if you want to get a little beachy and kind of light, you know, down to where's, where's the bay people? That might be fun down there. Um, we're seeing it, more metal roofs coming into vogue, and I know that. And so when you're seeing these metal roofs, I want y'all to know that's a galvaloom, galvaloom metal. It's so incredibly weather resistant. It's incredibly durable. It will last over. It's it's meant to last about 165 to 200 years, depending on the weather. It is, and if it's coated though, if it's silver. Um, that's, that's kind of the standard. If you get one of those cool colors, like this has got a cool color, just know it's going to cost about three times as much. So just keep that in mind when you're making your recommendations. I'm seeing more and more uh, interesting dormers. And these are not the, the kind that sit on top, like the colonial dormers that sit up top. These are, we're seeing this thing called wall dormers where they intersect and come down the side like this reason being. We're trying to bring in more light, bigger windows. And if we do a wall dormer, I can cut down and bring in a much larger size. Let's look at the difference. There's three kinds of wall dormers. I mean, three kinds of dormers. You've got insects. So maybe I want to mostly set on top of the roof. I don't want to interrupt that roof line, but I want to like, I don't want it to be so pronounced, so colonial, do insect. And then you've got a roof, rooftop dormer, and then the wall, that wall dormer. So this is where we are at. It's, Look at these beautiful wall dormers. Look at that, these huge black steel cased windows. We've got colonial style up top of it with a three, six, nine. You know, you just count those little squares and you go, that's a nine light window, a nine over one, okay? And so we've got these big steel cased windows. Look down here, massive transoms, big glass windows, big glass windows. That's where we're at, we know that. We know that in real estate, light is your money. Light is money, honey, in real estate. And in style, too, everyone's becoming very in vogue to have bigger windows. It's a transitional state that we're in. Or to get more technical, we are in the neo-eclectic era of architecture. It's a very cool place to be. This is neo-eclectic, quintessentially neo-eclectic. It's going to be loaded up with all sorts of siding materials, multiple roof materials. Some people find it's a little too busy, but it's where we're at. So what's going on in manufacturing and in design and architecture? Lots of different things happen. We've got metal, stucco, stone, composite shingles, shutters, louver vents, all sorts of stuff. It's kind of exciting, actually, I think. This is for you later. Oh, I just um, I scheduled a little post to come out on my Facebook page right after the luncheon. So it should be up there here after a little while. It'll actually be this presentation. And so if there's anything here that you want to come back to a reference, like this article right here on neo-eclectic architecture, it's the bomb. It's really going to lay out like what's happening today in architecture. Why is it neo-eclectic? How are we experiencing an architectural revivalism? And how in the postmodern era, this is almost, we're finding a balance between the modern and the traditional here in this state right here. It's transitional, right? I think it's quite Because it is an architectural revivalism, you're seeing things like this. This is why you're seeing trusses. You know, trusses built on the outside, on the inside. We're seeing gorgeous cathedral or vaulted ceilings. You know it's a cathedral ceiling when the vaulting happens symmetrically, right up into the middle. It's cathedral. If it's off like this, if it's more of a slanted shed roof that then comes down this way like a salt box, that's going to be a vaulted ceiling. So that's how we know when it's different. We're also seeing more, more steel and more cool cables being incorporated, both in stair steps and up in the ceiling. Now that definitely is, that's kind of a modern thought right there. Rustic exposed beams got to be one of the number one design trends we're seeing in half the, the majority of the time. We know they're, they're hollow. They're real easy to apply. They're not even structural. They're just really good looking. We see them out on the outside. Check this out. We've got these, these um, stone pier and wooden columns 
coming up to this, this portico with a truss at the top. We've got some prairie style windows, prairie over one. That's really in vogue right now to put a style on top and then the one on the bottom. All right, we're seeing a lot of that. And if we are doing windows, most of your windows are not gonna be the black steel case sexy windows. I love those, but they are also very expensive and something I would recommend um, only in a really high end luxury property. Otherwise, I'm gonna stick to my vinyl windows and but they are making them now in a charcoal color so we can look like the cool ones, right? We wanna look like it. Um, beautiful windows, beautiful windows. Okay, on your front doors, blue's the high, best for selling. I don't, there's been a lot of research put into that. And blue's one of those nurturing colors. It's just, you know, we're always trying to avoid anything that might be objectionable. That's always like my bare minimum goal, right? Is just to remove all the objections. And so blue's a very appeasing, appealing color, but we're kind of actually moving into this sort of dustier blue with some green undertones. If you're watching HGTV magazines or if you're looking at Architectural Digest, you're seeing this on the front of doors. This right here was Bear's 2018 color of the year. It, it's similar to what we're seeing in this room. You know, a little bit more green and just a hair more dusty gray undertone. Just go low sheen though, whatever you do. We want flat always on the ceiling, always flat. Sheen shows texture. And we don't want to see all that texture. I don't want to see any sort of seams on the ceiling. And then on the walls, I'm going, um, I'm going flat on the walls and a low sheen semi-gloss on all the trim. So we're, we're getting away from that semi-gloss on the high gloss. And my color, always on my strip. I don't care, just find your neutral strip. Uncannily, it is always this one. The number two down from the top is your wall color in real estate. It's light enough that if you need to paint the ceiling, you can almost always go walls and ceiling one color like that and then pop all your trim out in the other, okay? My favorite lately is Accessible Beige um, by Sherwin-Williams, Useful Gray by Sherwin-Williams, or Feathers of a Dove, you can absolutely paint walls and ceiling. That's a Valspar paint, Feathers of a Dove. Keep them warm. We, we pushed really hard and went to the cool because we were so sick and tired of the beige. So, you know, we went really gray. And now we've come back and kind of found a nice little spot in grayish. We call it grayish. It's a real thing. It's grayish. <laughs> and this is it. This is us. This is now. This is now. Lots of glass. Look at those beautiful painted cabinets. Lots of white. Are y'all seeing it? a common theme there with those metals? We're seeing lots of brushed. Brushed brass. So my three go-to hardware is going to be brushed brass. That's hard to say. Brushed brass. Um, brushed nickel. And then a matte black. Something that looks like it's nice steel. You know, like a, maybe an orb of bronze. But it's going to be that black. You know, if I'm going for the farmhouse, modern farmhouse. Thank you, Chip and Joanna. Look, that we are all trying to match now. <laughs> we'll get in some of that matte black. Um, Let's see. Oh, I just got another minute here. These are some, some of my favorite cabinet colors. I use these. I posted these on also my real estate resources Pinterest page. Every time I'm doing classes and I find new resources, I just kind of pin them there so y'all can come back to them. I've got a great article here on countertops. Two, that eat in Kitchen Island with a farmhouse sink. Just say that in your listing description and the phone will start ringing. Okay, it's true. There is a real thing called keywords. So here is, I'm gonna leave you with this. Oh, this beautiful shop, this is very now. You know, we're bringing in as much white as we can. We want as much light as we can. FYI, your light bulbs need to be the LED bright white. That's what we sell. It's not how, I don't want it at home, but it does, it's not. You know, but the way we live and the way we sell, we know are completely different. So bright white, get in some grayish subway tile, mix in a lighter granite, you're gonna get that look. There's a few more slides on this and some articles on this, so I want y'all to feel free at your leisure to really look at it or use it as reference if you need or want. Otherwise, I just thank you and appreciate your time. Thanks so much for letting me come and share with you. Thank you. Let's give her another round of applause.
It was tough for hours.